Hello and welcome to the Body Meets Mind podcast. I am Paulie and this is Tom. Today we are talking about a very, very cool topic, which is that of resilience, something that our society in the modern world has really, um, I feel, stepped away from in uh, recent decades. In fact, you know, uh, obesity has actually tripled since 1975, I believe. And there are so many reasons for this, but I do feel that um, a very comfortable existence that we find ourselves in year after year where things become automated, we, um, we find ourselves as humans drawing towards the path of least resistance because it just makes sense to do things easier. The, uh, the issue I find with that is there are a whole bunch of health implications that come up as a result. What do you think about that, Tommy? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's always interesting to me um, when you look at, <clears throat> you know, uh, socioeconomic trends and, and, and trying to find a causal factor for the reasons why things are the way they are. It's always tricky. I think, um, especially when it comes to a conversation like resilience, um, I wonder sometimes, this is, I'm biased because I work with a lot of young adults and adolescents in the clinic mm. and I often view myself, you know, older generations see that, see that generation as, oh, they're on their phones all the time. They're all anxious and depressed and, you mm. know, and I wonder sometimes whether we might all be like that if we grew up when they grew up, you know, because, yes. uh, they will raise, I mean, I was born in 1993, so I was, I was just on the cusp. I was quite lucky, you know, I was playing with Game Boys and stuff when I was a kid, but most of the time it was cubby houses, trees, you know, the, the ground is fire. You can't touch the ground, you know, slinkies. Um, so yeah. I was, I was just on that cusp where you, you go out in the mornings and you come home for lunch or you come home for dinner. And I used to eat fruit sandwiches with tomato sauce. But mum would make me at lunch. <laughs> but uh, it's hard. But look, I mean, you know, aside from all of that, we definitely need to um, be more resilient as human beings, um, for sure. In a world that is absolutely obsessed with, overconsumed by um, convenience, you know, um, and uh, it's uh, you know, you you mentioned it before. You know, our biological nature is to walk the path of least resistance you know if if i was a chimp back in the savannas and there was a banana tree and i was really hungry and it was 200 meters or there was a banana tree and that was a kilometer away i'd obviously go for the closest banana tree and now we can press a button and we can have pizzas and ice creams and alcohol and everything at our front doorstep so this is a very important topic yeah, it sure is. And as you mentioned, you know, technology has allowed us to to literally not leave our couch. We can go on existing for the rest of our lives without leaving our couch. And we can get anything we want as a result of that. In fact, our couches, in order to get up from the couch, we can buy a couch that actually lifts us up. <laughs> yeah, that's right. As opposed, and I've seen them being advertised on midday TV. Oh. Uh, like, you know, they're a thing and I bet you they sell like hotcakes mm. because you've got people around there going, oh shit, I don't even have to stand up from this couch. Yeah. I've been sitting on this couch like an idiot. <laughs> exactly. I'm hell? even getting up, wasting my hamstrings. It's unbelievable. Going on here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, blues. by the way, I must go to see my doctor about my knees. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's crazy, must, man. It's totally crazy. Many yeah, many totally. Other things. This is uh, the first time in human civilization where we have to actively seek out discomfort to regulate our mental health you know it's a very bizarre yeah. time it's it's a prescription and, uh, and i think that's something that um i wanted to discuss today it's like not very long ago discomfort and challenge was built into our everyday life yes we were confronted with it because if we weren't confronted with it we would not survive yeah now it is a um it's it, it's an arc it, it's design it needs to be designed by humans it needs to be prescribed by ourselves to be able to make our lives more challenging in order to be able to give to ourselves to be able to give to our bodies and to give to our minds yes mate it's it's interesting that we talk about this i'd love to speak on the neurochemistry because um it's in the front of my it's actually quite coincidental i know you've just written a blog about it, um 
I just finished reading a book all about dopamine uh, by mm -hmm. a psychiatrist. And um, she talks about kind of what happens and we can break this down when oh. we perceive a reward. So, so that, you know, so, so your dopamine is kind of a tonic baseline. So it's um, um, scientists and, and psychiatrists talk about homeostasis. So the balance of, of the neurochemistry. Um, you might be bored or whatever it is, or you might see a stimulus, you might have a thought, we can use food because it's such an easy example. Mm -hmm. uh, the thought about um, eating a donut um, actually increases our dopamine levels. So the thought alone, not actually eating the dopamine, okay? And it, most it, it increases it more than the eating of it. Am I right. correct? Uh, absolutely. And the reason for that, so that's a great point. So the reason for that is because dopamine is our um, neurotransmitter that's responsible for uh, excitation and motivation. Mm -hmm. People people usually conflate it with satisfaction and happiness. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of not the case. So dopamine gets us to do shit, basically. Serotonin is what's secreted when we feel content. So it's mm -hmm. the eating of the donut. Mm -hmm. So it's this temporary satiation. But it makes sense that both of those uh, neurotransmitters start to decrease because we need to go out and get more of the thing that brings us joy. And usually the things that bring us joy fundamentally, are the things that keep us alive. Yeah. So it's food, it's sex and, and everything like that, you know? Mm -hmm. So you have this thought about, about the donut, you get an increase in your dopamine levels followed by a near immediate plummeting of those dopamine levels, which mm -hmm. is another way of saying a craving. So you have the thought and then you immediately get this feeling that to me kind of, shows you how far away you are from getting that thing. It's like, oh God, you know, it's all the way down there. I've got to go for a drive or whatever it is, you know. And uh, you know, you can you can start to see now how um damaging Uber Eats is because it's just bang, you know, get rid of that craving, get rid of that craving. Yeah. yeah. The craving is what gives us motivation to do something. So mm -hmm. then I get off my ass to the degree that I want the, the donut. I get off my ass and I walk down, then I go and get the donut and bang, now I've got some serotonin there. Okay. So it's uh, go for it. L let me ask you a question. I'm I'm keen to hear this since it's very fresh in your mind. What happens when we breed a society in a world where we have those dopamine hits and we have access to them almost instantaneously, as opposed to working for the dopamine hit, yep. like we ha we had to once upon a time. Yeah. So it's a great question, and we kind of already know this intuitively, but the answer is that a dopamine hit without prior perceived effort absolutely makes us feel far worse than if it was the opposite. So if you can just get dopamine or feel good neurotransmitter into your brain um, without having done anything to, to earn it, you don't feel good. You don't feel mm. fulfilled. You don't feel like your life is progressing everywhere, you know, and, and that's actually uh, neuroscientifically true it's not just a thing of oh i didn't earn it so i feel shit about myself it's it's and i try i try to say this to clients all the time it's like this isn't a you know let's say i'm working with someone called john like this isn't a john problem you know this is a human thing if i was you right now given what you're going through i'd be feeling the exact same way mm -hmm. because i have the same chemical makeup as you do you know and so many young kids man it's insane like i've got no motivation you know and it's like hey without this awareness and this real challenge to mm. get away from all of these dopamine hits, I'd be feeling the exact same way you are. So I, I really feel kind of sympathetic mm. for them. There's a lot of hope, but I feel the sympathy. <laughs> I, I get it because, you know, the marketers out there have realized that this is what gets dollars into their into their business right yes. it's, there's nothing more powerful than getting this instantaneous um you, you know dopamine hit so yeah, if you good. actually excuse me uh, <laughs> that wasn't a burp just by the way <laughs> so so if you're continuously getting these and you know you're fighting a really uphill battle as well um if if companies are putting probably in some instances, hundreds of millions of dollars behind, um, you know, marketing these products to you, knowing that exactly how to excitate these um, these dopamine receptors for you, then um, you need to go to work to be able to uh, create an architecture behind um, fighting, 
exactly what these these companies are doing to be able to create balance in your mind and it doesn't just stop with the with the body you know uh sorry with the mind you know hence the body meets mind podcast you know we, we talk a lot about the mind we also talk a lot about the body because mm-hmm. resilience in the body um will have a tremendous effect not just on your obesity rates and your biological health rates but your mental health rates as well mm, absolutely man i think you know the great the great segue into the the bottom up approach here is that you know something um dr huberman talks about is that you can't heal the mind with the mind you know i love that because so yeah. often we we go and seek therapy because we have a mind problem mm. and sometimes that's important because talk therapy can work to unjumble you know, thoughts that sometimes have been there for for years from past traumas and so forth. But inevitably, who we are is a consequence of what we do across time and do is about action, do is Mm. in the body, you Mm. know, and, and, you know, to to bring it back to resilience, you know, practicing, doing something difficult, Mm. habitually, is is one of the best things you can do to build resilience and build a more fulfilled sense of self. Spot on. And, and and I get what, uh, you know, a- Andrew uh, is talking about when he, when he talks about um, you can't, you know, fight the mind with the mind. When you're in uh, a dark place or if you're really, really feeling this melancholy, the last thing you mm-hmm. feel like you want to do is get into that mind space yes. because it's a very, very complex place and it's not particularly inviting place to be. So something more tangible for you to be able to access might be um, accessing resilience through your body. And I think it's a great place, a little bit of a leeway for, for us to get a little bit more practical yep. about things that we can do with the body and also with the mind to be able to develop resilience. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so this is a this is a good point. So we'll bring it back to dopamine just for a second. So so we understand what's going on. So when you have an increase in dopamine, um, because of homeostasis, you're going to get a proportional drop in dopamine levels relative to that increase. So mm-hmm. let's just say the baseline zero, and you have an ice cream, and you go up by two. Okay, and then when the ice cream's done, you're going to go down by negative two. So you're going to mm-hmm. feel worse. But what you want to do is is so the awareness tip for everyone listening to this is constantly feel into where you are on that scale. Okay. Mm. If you've had a giant pizza, okay. When you perceive that drop and you start to feel that drop and the negative thoughts and feelings come in, you know, see that as not another reason to do something else that doesn't give you that kind of earned reward feel into that space you know a psycho a psychologist friend of mine says um learn to feel shit better <laughs> i love that because you're right. just feeling into that you know and ram Dass talks about you know um going down the stream and experiencing the ten thousand horrible visions and the ten thousand beautiful visions mm. you know it's it's a it's a more esoteric way of kind of talking about what we are talking about you know but if you can just flip your mind and go i'm down in this dark place and i'm going to feel it because it's what my my brain and body is doing, um, voluntarily allowing yourself to be there might be ten push ups, you know, or even yep. just going out for a walk or something that doesn't give you that dopamine hit straight away without earned effort. Yes, um, yeah, love it. Uh, let's get practical about yep. uh, you know you just mentioned a couple of um, like mental examples of how you can go about doing it, um, you know. Uh, simply viewing the world in a different through a different lens when you walk down the street being able to uh, access various different uh components of your brain um what's something that you might be able to uh indulge in or participate in that accesses other aspects of your mind so so i'm big on um i really like that notion of feeling all the feelings. I think it's such an important tool that you can use in this day and age, you know, and it's just being with what is, you Mm. know, that's mindfulness in a, in a nutshell. It really is. It's, it's creating space between stimulus and response, Mm. you know, Mm. and just like viewing yourself is as a, as a very interesting painting with a thousand different perspectives, mm. you know, and going, oh, I wonder why that's there. 
you know, mm. and not trying to change it or fix it or anything, just going, hmm, that's there. Okay, cool. You start to notice patterns after that. But yeah. to, to me, to be completely honest with you, if we want to get practical, um, which I think is something that you can speak to here, um, I think when we do start to feel flat, that initial change in mindset then leads to things you can do with your body um, is the be all and end all, you know, yeah. um, which I'd love for you to speak to, to, to speak on, dude, because I really agree with, with Huberman, you know, when you're really yeah. flat healing the mind with the mind is, is a tough thing. It is. You're in there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and to what you were talking about, I, I always like to look at, um, you know, one, one's personal situation with, uh, with curiosity rather than overwhelming emotion yeah. where, you can't, uh, you know, kind of access that, that um, sense of space and perspective. Yes. Yeah. So, so let, let, we'll put this into like a physical context. When you're working with someone, mate, and they're talking to you about low motivation, you know, dark thoughts. I mean, there's a lot of therapy overlap in every industry, you know, so. if you, if you work with people, then <laughs> you're a therapist to some degree. Yeah. Um, what what are you kind of prescribing them typically what are you first of all what are the common uh themes and then and then what are you prescribing so uh f for me personally i if we're talking about res like let's just uh really look at re resilience um since it is the theme of today's uh discussion mm. uh i think some really really simple tools that you can do and i i, I mentioned this um is putting yourself in in a, in a less comfortable situation. Something that is, um, you know, talked about a lot um, of recent times is um, extreme temperature, um, yeah. you know, kind of exposure. Um, start by having turning off the hot water in your shower for ten seconds at mm. the end of that shower, and then move that dial up to thirty seconds, maybe sixty seconds. This might not yeah. seem like something that is. Uh, going to have an impact on your 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 brain and your emotions, but if you do that for a consistent period of time, it proves to your body that it can actually get through. So, get not not only I'm not even talking about the neurochemistry, sure, the mean hit that that you actually do receive through hard work. I'm talking about the proof to yourself that you can actually get through something that is actually uncomfortable and you don't, um, you know, uh, give in at the, 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 the first sight of some kind of discomfort. So, yeah. so let's just use that as an, as an example. I'm, yeah. I'm happy we, we were actually meant to talk about an hour ago and I'm happy we uh, delayed it for, by an hour because my face was a beetroot. I came from uh, a 40 minute uh, sauna exposure, which was- Oh, you did? Oh, I didn't yeah, even know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay. which was amazing. And I was, as I was driving home, I was looking in the mirror going, this is going to be an interesting podcast. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, episodes and <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was, it, it was great. And I'm, I'm starting to use extreme um, temperature exposure as mm. a form of resilience. I love it. I love mm. getting, I, I look at that, that first 20 minutes in the sauna as a precursor to the next 15, 20 minutes, because that's the stuff that really, really challenges your mind, challenges mm -hmm. your body, exposes your heart to, um, you know, stresses that uh, create that horm hormonic or hormosis uh, effect in your body. So uh, we, we talked about this in uh, past episodes, but once you mm -hmm. challenge your body through these um, this adversity, um, not only are you changing the neurochemistry in your mind, not only are you proving to yourself that you can come out the other end of something that is challenging, but yes. you're actually making, you're, you're adding years to your life as well. Yes. You're telling your body that uh, if you can stress it out to a certain degree and your body can uh, respond as a result of this, your body will adapt. And if you can do this consistently enough, and if you can do this through an intermittent prescription, then your uh, your longevity genes, uh, everything as a result of this, your internal um, environment is going to respond in a positive way. Mm. Man, I love that. And it, it's so it's so uplifting, you know, to, to hear that because you're absolutely right. You know, exposing yourself consistently with, 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 gradual greater intensity 
you know, change is the baseline of, of what's tolerable in terms of, you know, um, pain and pleasure. You know, the other interesting thing from the book is that pain and pleasure are located in the same part of the brain. Mm. So the part of the brain responsible for inducing pleasurable states also does the same thing with painful states. And what mm -hmm. that means is that we can become tolerant of increasingly um, easier societies, <laughs> which brings us back to our initial point, mm -hmm. or harder and harder societies. And I think, you know, even beyond, sorry, even within our own backyards, don't forget about society, forget about who you want to be as an individual and the kind of vision you have for your mm. life. You know, for me, I'll just give a personal example very quickly. Um, now I kind of wake up every morning quite early and um, I'll typically read for at least an hour before I get into my writing. Reading does not come naturally at all. Mm. My, my thirst for knowledge does. Mm. It's very much an inherent thing. Um, but, um, but reading is... Uh, was always difficult for me. I just thought it was really cool to, to be able to say, oh, you know, I've read this and I've read this and I really had read it, you know? Um, yeah. But I started off by reading easy books <laughs> and it was, only, and I couldn't concentrate for a very long time. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, prolonged concentration was an act of discomfort. You know, yeah. it wasn't a, necessarily a physiological stressor like mm -hmm. cold showers or sauna, but just being bored and then gradually expanding my ability to just do one thing was yeah. was tough but but it but you habitualize and you can find a new baseline i, I love that and that's that's another incredible example of getting out the other end of uh, adversity you know um that's a that's a significant stress it's a perceived stress it's an understanding of the way you saw your relationship to reading and i guarantee you now the way you the way you've described this, how you've come out the other end, you look at your relationship with reading in a very different yeah. light. Mm. Yep. And as a result of that, the stimulus needs to change as well. And this is something that's also quite interesting. It's like, you know, let, let's use the reading as an example. Maybe you started um, a few years ago by reading Where's Spot? <laughs> that's so weird that you just said that, man. I was about to say Spot's Magical Christmas. And it's a great book. It's like, a great book. Doo -doo. That's my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a fantastic book, um, but you've probably evolved uh, to a certain. I wish, <laughs> <laughs> but, but this is what happens if I can lead that to uh, you know having a ten second cold shower. Yes. you know you, you might find yourself in an ice bath for th for three minutes, and yes. you know there's naturally going to be a point where you don't really want to, you know create any more adversity because it right. starts to become detrimental yes. and this is where people start you know can get into that kind of realm where they become adrenaline junkies yes. and um they get those massive dopamine hits from um all of this kind of um activity that, that really puts your life at, at risk and totally and, and people do do that but uh what, what what is cool is science actually can measure um uh where that dopamine hit gets at its height and like let's let's use cold exposure for example between one and three minutes it right. seems to be the sweet spot for an ice bath yep. if you do any more you're really really um you're kind of arresting your your benefits yep. biologically for what you you would be able to achieve through dopamine etc so mm. whilst you may be able to train yourself to do it you could step into a a realm where you're putting yourself in danger Absolutely, uh, and you're you're not really getting any more reward biologically from it, mate. Absolutely, you know that you you, you spoke about um, hormosis before, and you know I think that the science is pretty conclusive on that. In 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 you know showing that a little bit of resistance leads to a good amount of adaptation, but mm. too much resistance is absolutely dangerous and, and detrimental. Yeah. Yeah, and, and and it's like, let's use uh, like like an example of training at the right. gym. Okay, perfect. Uh, you know, if you are regularly going to uh, train your body, and let's say you're cycling through, you're periodizing a program, and and at some stage you get to, I don't know, like you're deadlifting um, 60, 70, 75 percent of your one RM. Maybe you get to eighty percent of your one RM. Uh, and you're doing that over a period of time. Well, I'll tell you right now, if you're lifting 100% of your one RM 
every single time you get towards that bar, you're going to hurt yourself. Yes. Because your, your body will not allow it to recover in a positive and a constructive manner. And yep. it doesn't give your body time to adapt to the environment that you've actually exposed it to. So yep. it's really, really important for you to be aware and cognizant of how to expose yourself to these types of things. And mm. a certain element of that can be intuitive that just, just know that there is a, a, there's definitely a switch that you can turn on that is going to be too great. Mate, absolutely. I think that's a that's a good place to um, come full circle. And I think when it comes to being resilient, um, bottom up, top down, it's so important. It's so important to, excuse me, um, compare yourself with yourself, you know, mm-hmm. um, other people, you know, I mean, think about it like Mount Everest. It's my favorite, anal- favorite analogy for, for all this kind of stuff. You know, there are people out there who are, you know, they're at camp, camp four. And they're they're making their way to the top, you know. Um, You might not even be ready to get to base camp yet. It's Mm. really, really important that you see it like that. But stepping forward and becoming more resilient relative to your experience, that's the way to do things, you know. So any sort of tools and examples, go for it. If, 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 you know, if you want to use reading as an example and you really struggle reading, maybe sitting down every day um, and, and reading a paragraph and just spending time with that paragraph and, and, and seeing if you can do it before your mind starts to wander, that might be where you're at. You know, yeah. we're all at different levels. hundred percent. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's, that, that, that's beautiful. And you can apply a very, very clear prescription of progressive overload yes. when you're using something like, uh, you know, reading, you know, if you're starting with, uh, one paragraph, then you can add a sentence every day, you know, on, on top of that. Um, if you start by putting your shoes on and going for a, a walk, uh, getting up off that couch that allows you <laughs> yeah, to get exactly. up on your own, uh, <laughs> yeah. and, and you go, f- you eventually get around the block. Who knows? Maybe you get to a walk run scenario where you're walking for five minutes and you run mm-hmm. for one minute. There are so many different scenarios that you can apply this, these laws of progressive overload, but know that resilience is a progressive step and you don't want to go too hard too early for a number of reasons. The first one is you could hurt yourself. The second one is you, um, you're probably going to get intimidated when you fail if yes. you go too hard and too quick. So okay. you need to be able to apply that um, the, those laws of uh, progressive overload. Mm, mm. So that that is the um, that is the the podcast for today. That was a wonderful chat, and thanks, Tom, for your uh, your insights into the uh, neurochemistry behind dopamine hits and how and what goes on inside of our brains when this happens. Mate, right back at you. It's always a pleasure. I mean, we uh, I love that we catch up so frequently because I think every time we catch up, whilst we agree on the on the kind of time um, of the of the podcast episodes, there's always so much that we could talk about. So um, we will continue to do that. Absolutely. Cool. Beautiful. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Tom. See you, mate.